So we're at the Malibu Wine Hikes. In my mind, I think everyone's gonna be dressed really fancy. So I came in my fancy outfit, obviously. I'm here. Uh, red wine is good for your heart. White wine, wait, white, bro woo! White wine is clear. Hi guys, my name is Bailey Sarian and on today's episode of Bailey Does, I am here at Malibu Wine Hikes where we're gonna drink wine and go on hikes, I think. I'm not really sure, I haven't done this before. But I do know we're gonna drink some wine and I hopefully learn about wine too. I just like don't understand wine. I don't think it's good, but I'm curious enough it's only because I've been drinking cheap wine. And um, I have a tour guide, PR, who's gonna show us around, hopefully see some animals and I'm not sure what else is going on around here. Let's go. Wow, you look just like the um, giraffe from Toys R Us. Yeah, Jeffrey. Definitely He's not going to bite me, is he? I'm really you can nice. Straight up, hand him a piece of lettuce. Oh my God, that you tongue. Go. Or if you're feeling a little bolder, I think you should try this probably. Oh, do, it, do it for the fans. No. You can haul out your mouth. You come up like that. <laughs> that's intimate. <laughs> you get tongue sometimes, that's true. And then one that I really like is you get down, you get down like this and you hang out like you're like, you can give them a little kiss, hang out like your buddies, and then you give them the lettuce. What do you like to do for fun? I feel like we're on some kind of kids TV show. Basically, with wine. Bye! <laughs> What's that one's name, Blindy? Yes. How'd you, how'd you know that? <laughs> Well, I don't know, just a wild <laughs> guess here. Is this where you're gonna murder me? Do you want that to happen? Well, I mean, I've seen Lifetime movies. This is usually... So these are Chumash pictographs. And the Chumash were the natives here for European expansion. And this was probably one of the first interactions the Chumash natives in this area had ever had with Westerners. They painted this here as a, as a pictographic record of this major historical event for them. Did they draw the dick? Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's, I, I think that's like, you know, the dude who's in charge has got the biggest one. Yeah. yeah. What are we doing now? We are wine tasting. You feel like you've earned it? Yeah. yeah. After yeah. all those animals all and those stuff. All those animals, yeah. She's ready for some wine. Cool. Yep. This is a dangerous bottle to be alone with. This one's very popular with this. Expect green apple and citrus notes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> it tastes like I'm drinking perfume. Oh, okay. That's uh, that's probably the alcohol. You ready for some rosé? Yeah, I've heard about rosé. Okay. Isn't that good? I think that's gonna be good. Yes, rosé is quite popular. So this is the rosé of Sangiovese, and um, this one is out of Sonoma County. And so with this, um, expect some potpourri notes. And oh then god, so it's gonna of, taste like the toilet? The, no. <laughs> I was also gonna say... Like grandma's house? Killing me, <laughs> Bailey. Um, I was also gonna say expect some sort of strawberry rhubarb flavor with this one. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not a wine person. That's totally possible. It just tastes like metal. All right, so we're moving into some reds now. Maybe this will be a game changer, fingers crossed. Um, this is 14.5% alcohol. Mm -hmm. No wonder people drink it. They're getting up. Yeah. So with this guy, expect like some jammy blackberry, a little bit of currant flavor, and a um, bit of a tobacco finish. Oh my God. That is awful. <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? No. Oh, I'm no. I'm literally serving you the flight that we give to folks when they go on hikes. People like this? Yeah. It tastes like a fruit punch at first, and then it tastes like an old cigarette. That's the tobacco. No. Yeah. <laughs> Your experience is lining up with the descriptions. Whoa, that's so weird. I definitely think, like, like my cheap wine tasted, like, worse than the expensive stuff, but overall, it's still just as shitty, you know? Yeah. I'm just not a wine person. It's I really want to fit in, it's but it's just okay. not working. Thank you so much, PR, for showing us around. And 
I mean, I know it was just supposed to be wine tasting, but the animals were the best part. I will come again for the animals. Mm. I'm sorry if I offended you. No offense at all. I understand that it's an acquired taste. I just don't get it. Malibu Wine Hikes was so much fun. There was tons of animals. It was a beautiful location. I was very distracted by the animals because they were so, like, super cute. There's a spit. Oh, we just got spat at. <laughs> Gross! But I feel like the reason that I'm doing Bailey Does is because I'm trying to learn something about what it is I'm doing. So I brought in a wine specialist who's gonna go more in depth about wines and the scents and the glasses and all that good stuff that I really want to know. Let's bring him in and get to some wine tasting. So we are here with Ian, and he is a wine educator, but also the founder of WineLA.com. I've heard that you're not necessarily a wine lover. Oh no, I hate wine. Okay, what I'm going to do is just start you off with something sweeter, because a sweet wine is kind of the gateway to saying, hey, this isn't bad. Does it matter the glass? Because I've heard that it does matter about the glass. There's this famous family, the Riedel family, and they said if it's a $10 bottle of wine, have it in a casual glass. If it's a $100 bottle of wine, put it in a $100 glass. Oh. And so you can just think of it that way a little bit. And I think, you know, casual wine, you could drink it out of a cup of any kind. Yeah, like I have my Big Gulp 7-Eleven. <laughs> sure. I reuse that. <laughs> I've had wine in there. If I poured the wine in a red plastic cup and then you taste it in a glass, it will taste different. Really? It will not, this will make it taste better. The red plastic cup will take away some of its benefits. So huh. the glass does matter, honestly. They put a stem on it to raise it off the table to keep your fingerprints off of the glass and for you to be able to see the wine. You're going like this. Yeah, so you know why I'm swirling it? Because yeah. if you were trapped in the bottle for a long time, you'd want a little exercise too. So this is just like stretching the wine out, we're letting it relax. Is it in the wrist? And yeah, you can develop your technique. Or is it in the arm? Um, the I, I think it's in. I think it's more in the fingers. Yeah, oh. right in the in the touch with the glass. Oh. I notice people smelling their glasses. I, I like. What is it that you're smelling? So when we smell wine, we I start by assessing kind of the first thing I smell, and I think of, I, I kind of give, have some acronyms for that. You know, you just want to smell a few things: uh, fruit, earth, and wood. Yeah. Yes. Wait, we can taste now? Mm-hmm. Do I have to hold my pinky up? Mm-hmm. Mm. Did I do that? Mm-hmm. Whoa. That's bomb. Is it candy-like? <laughs> yes. I've never tried one like, this is so good. All right. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wow. I've never had a wine I like. This is amazing. I love it. I love that I was the one who gave yeah. you your first great wine. It tastes like cough syrup, but better. Uh, okay, cough syrup. What we, you just had is a sweet white. Okay. Okay, and when they say dry, they mean there's no sugar left. Oh. Yeah, so, so why is it called thing. cake bread? That's the family name. Oh, it's very deceiving. You go back to- I thought it was gonna be like- Like cake? Oh yeah. Yeah. I would buy this one just based off the name. So when you're buying this wine, how do you know it's a dry white? It doesn't say dry white on it. This wine is a Sauvignon Blanc. And when people label the wine after the name of the grape, there is an expectation. But we're gonna open up a- Is that what that part's wine. for? Yeah, that little knife, yeah. Just cut the foil off. I had no idea. Sauvignon Blanc is very aromatic. Which means? It's gonna smell grapey. Okay. It's gonna smell fresh and fruity, and it's gonna have a different personality. And it's telling you what to expect if you understand what Sauvignon Blanc is. The definition, you kind of expect grapefruit, grass, bell pepper, uh, aromas of fig. Um, Who likes this? I don't wanna drink grass. <laughs> well, some people like grass a lot. Really? So we brought this out, it's the spit bowl. Yeah, spit cup, or spit tune. Really, and everyone just spits in this. Yep. Smell the wine, detect certain things, build up your information. Building. Mm-hmm. Now, put a little wine in your palate, in your mouth. And just like, direct the stream there. And you, when, you, when you spit that out, 
you're gonna feel your mouth just kind of like a dry. Yeah, drying out, cleaning up. All you're gonna taste now is grapefruit. Oh yeah. Citrus, like you just bit into a grapefruit. So if you had something oily like uh, sushi, some fish, some oysters, maybe kind of salty, briny. Now imagine being chips? able to clean that with chips, like a potato chip. Yeah. Sure. Lace. They're crazy. <laughs> I like champagne with Lay's potatoes. Really? Chips. Yes. Yes. I have so much to learn. So we're going to talk about two really cool wines. One from Old World, from Burgundy, from France, and one from California. They are made from Chardonnay. So I'm going to pour. What's Chardonnay? Chardonnay is the name of the grape. Okay. And there I are there that. are thousands of grapes, but today what we're going to taste are like five or six of the most important ones. We're going to start by tasting this French Burgundy. Are you keeping it a secret, like so when we taste it, we'll see the differences? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're talking Chardonnay. We're talking apple, pear, vanilla, and lots of stone character, almost like wet stone, like the rain just fell. And you know how you walk outside in the rain and you smell that wet everything, wet concrete? That's- well, Why would you want that in your wine? It just tells you- I've never like from. stepped outside and was like, oh my God, I would love to drink some wet stone right now. <laughs> no, I don't think that's a natural oh, reaction. I would but... love some wet stone. <laughs> so you're gonna order a special bottle of wine to celebrate a special occasion and you connect around that bottle. And a special occasion could be Netflix on Monday. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. All right. I expected right. that this would happen. <laughs> this Wet is dry. Stone is not for me. Wet stone, dry, high acid, clean, kind of not Ooh. a lot of fruit and flavor, but lots of acid. Now we're gonna go to the same wine from Napa Valley. So this is the California version of what we the France version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we had Chardonnay from France, now we're tasting California. Now, smelling back and forth. The California Chardonnay comes from a, a warmer, riper, more sunshine type of a, an environment. So you're gonna smell more fruit. Yes, it smells brighter. Yeah, exactly. And this one smells heavier. You can literally smell the sunshine in yes. our California wine. While the French Chardonnay maybe smelled like a green apple, the California Chardonnay smells more like a, a baked apple. So when you smell it, can you also smell like, oh, look at that, that that's not a good face. Mm. It just, it, it burns. Uh, it, 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 it's got acid, yeah. Now we're gonna taste some wines that aren't really good in a little while. Oh, that wasn't them? Uh, no, no, these are good. When you're looking at bottles of wine that are under $10, they're doing anything they need to do to make that wine taste good. The, when you get towards 20, 30, and $40, you start talking about wines that really come from a place and taste like the place they come from. So it's like, Drugstore makeup versus high-end makeup. Exactly. I, I, I really think there's great parallels between makeup and wine. You know, how how much detail, what the products are, you know, the different chemicals that they're using or not using. The creaminess, the matte, the dry, the hydrating, the okay. satin, the metallic. Wait, <laughs> see, that's exactly what I'm yeah. talking about. That is wine. Yes. You're, you're, you're using the same language now. Yes. This first wine is pretty thin and you can see that it's probably pretty young and pretty thin. She's a young one. Yeah. And when you smell it, it's very bright and fresh and doesn't have a lot of developed character. It smells kind of young wine, very mm -hmm. just fermented. Mm -hmm. And um, that first wine Ooh. is from a box. Oh. And it is called Black Box. And they do a really good job of getting the wine in the box. Um, that and, is the funniest thing. Isn't that cool? A huge portion of the world is drinking wine out of this type of container as a daily wine. Mm -hmm. So this is Opus One. This was founded in 1978. and uh, This one. This one, yeah. And this sells for about $325 a bottle. They would. When we tasted the Opus One, hopefully you got a little t a sense of the texture, the complexity, the time. And I can tell the that time. You, were, you were really- Oh yeah, yeah that was $300. Yeah, now I wanted to get to a bigger wine, so I brought my family's wine. My family makes Zinfandel, and this. So we have to like this yeah, yeah, wine. Let's let's let's, let's hope, hope that you do like it. Um, Zinfandel is a very special grape variety. It's really kind of California's grape. 
you could buy Merlot, Cab, and every other grape from all over the world, you know, from France, from Chile. But Zinfandel is really made here in California. And when you swirl and smell this, it's gonna be spicy, black pepper, <laughs> plum. No. It smells like when you had uh, gym locker room. Mm -hmm. Funky. It's spicy. Mm -hmm. I guess that is spicy. It's got that locker room funk. Yeah, it smells like sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> and you can almost smell there's like this stony, smoky, dark plum skin. Oh, I swallowed. Damn it. Oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's <a> <laughs> <laughs> it went down the road. <laughs> so I want to say a big thank you to Ian for helping me discover new uh, wine. Actually, no. The whole reason that I was doing this Bailey Does thing is because I want to learn things that I don't know, and I feel like you did just that. You taught me s so much in this little time mm -hmm. about wine. And this is what I wanted. I, I feel like it. I just, a, a light has opened. The ah. clouds have opened. Thank you, Bailey. I don't necessarily like wine, but I can appreciate it a little bit more. Cool. And the storytelling behind it and the wet stones. Yeah. We're gonna drink some more wine in the future. You're gonna be a really good storyteller for us. So don't forget to check out in the description box. I am going to list where you can find Ian and you also do wine tours. It's gonna be fun. I love it. I'm so glad to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Um, so, oh, oh, sorry. That was like, <laughs> that was gonna be one of those awkward, um, try again. <laughs> I learned so much and I am so excited that I brought Ian in because he taught me a lot. And I still don't like wine. Like I really don't like the taste, but it was kind of fun discovering the different scents and like that aftertaste and the swishing on, on the tongue and in the glass. I haven't gotten the hang of it, but I definitely feel like I could not hold a conversation about wine. Uh, but it's still very confusing. There's so many different types out there. I don't, uh, I think it was like Bergen in Vermont and uh, Zinfandale, Zin, and uh, cake bread. Damn, I didn't remember anything. I remember Sun Van Blanc. Okay. Wasn't that the most popular one? Sun Van Blanc? <laughs> I don't know. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Bailey Does. Let me know down below what you guys would like me to try next. I also hope that you are leaving this episode learning something new about wine. Please don't drink and drive, be responsible. Have a great day today, make good choices, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.